Hey, have you ever gaslighted an entire economy, an entire group of people into thinking that you didn't destroy the world economy, even though you are likely going to be at fault? That's a Kenneth Griffin here, Citadel's Kenneth Griffin on Financial Times, telling us how he is not going to take any of the blame when your retirement funds and your grandparents' retirement funds dry up when the mixed squeeze happens, the margin call squeeze coined here for the uh, for the fact that certain hedge funds are going to get margin called as the price of AMC and GME start rocketing and they have to take their thumbs out of their many, many pies that they have been sticking in uh, because they need to take all their money out of the other stocks and buy into GameStop. As we speak, GameStop is on a rip up to 192 and let's see how long it can go for. We are noticing AMC and GME take a little bit of a paper-handed detour but on major recoveries right here beginning of the day neither are on double digits quite yet but both are roughly around four to six percent up on the day and we need scissors in the chat and down in the comment section for that all right let's focus up on exactly what kenji sorry kenneth griffin is going to uh, try and explain away the whole financial crisis here the retail stock, okay, let's see. Stimulus could jolt inflationary pressures back to life. Top hedge funds managers warn. Remember guys, that live sub count is right there. I would love it if we can tr go all the way up to 75,000 today. And it was your help, I'm sure it's gonna be very, very likely. So uh, smash that subscribe button, that bell button, and that like button before we keep going. The retail stock trading frenzy will teach, but uh, will reach a new crescendo in the coming weeks thanks to the US government stimulus checks. But the inflation this support could ignite represents a threat to the stock market bull run, according to Citadel's Kenneth Griffin. Uh, the founder of one of the world's biggest hedge funds thinks the $1,400 sent out to millions of Americans this month will likely fuel another spasm of, <laughs> spasm of retail trading before activity settles down to a still elevated level. Amateur trading could remain a powerful feature in U.S. equities, he said. Mm spasm okay uh, I would say right now that he is already bearish on the fact that $1,400 spent to help people with their rent, help people with their food, uh, and help people just survive is likely going to cause for him a bad stock market, uh, a stock market position that he doesn't want to be in. Already doesn't make him paint it out to be such a good guy. However, in a rare interview with Financial Times, Griffin warned that huge amounts of central bank bond buying and government spending could jolt U.S. inflation out of its decades-long torpor and unsettle financial markets just as they were attracting more retail involvement, right? It only hurts the market when the smooth-brained, uneducated apes come in and don't know what they're doing, like spend all their money on GME and AMC. Is this where we're going to? Uh, given the incredible amount of stimulus that has been unleashed, there is a possibility we see real surge in inflation, Ken Griffin said. The question is whether it is transitory or becomes permanent and structural, and there is a much higher chance that it becomes entrenched than any other time over the past 12 years. On the whole, Griffin says he is optimistic on the outlook and hailed the retail trading boom as a way for more Americans to benefit from the U.S. stock market. But he warned of a doomsday scenario. Did he really? This is in quotes. He warned of a doomsday scenario when which accelerating inflation deepens a bond market sell-off, sends stocks tumbling, and stokes unrest among retail investors hurt in the process. I cannot make this more clear. He is saying that the stimulus check and you, in particular, are going to be the reason why the market crashes. Not because he, as a uh, has a margin called hedge fund, is going to be taking all of his money out of every stock. You are the reason that the market is going to be broken up. Neener, neener, pumpkin eater. I'm the one that is trying to save it. This is the greatest amount of public opinion swing that I can possibly imagine. This is ridiculous because he knows that this is likely going to happen. We already covered that Citadel is not hiring anymore. A healthy company that doesn't care about the next batch of employees coming on, right? The next guard. <laughs> Take GameStop, for example. They are hiring more and more uh, and they are expecting thousands more headcount just this year alone. So put your money where your mouth is.
Kenny G. Michael Rake says, what is your thoughts of a nightmare situation of government stepping in and delisting GME to prevent a market meltdown? I think that that's a good amount of FUD. First of all, uh, that has only been talked about by pundits and the Jim Cramers of the world, right? Likely, that is going to be something that will not happen, right? And for now, you don't even have to understand why the like what the implications are if that does happen for the purposes of this article and for the purposes of moving into the uh, the actual flows of how the government works. Likely, they're going to have to bail out at least some of these hedge funds, like they did back in 08. However, when they do, the people that they'll be paying attendees to is the U.S. government paying them through the hedge funds directly to you, the people that are buying and hodling. Not financial advice, of course. This is just me as a smooth brain sharing a banana with the uh, when the banana is financial education here. So U.S. inflation expectations have jumped sharply in 2021. So we are watching uh, the well, obviously inflation drops to an all time low in the beginning of the uh, pandemic and then slowly rises to one of the all time highs in the coming uh, five years as derived from inflation proved treasuries as a percentage okay so two and a half percent right now that is that's a big fat percentage point and we even talked about seeing jerome powell talk about that live fears over inflation are growing across the investment industry with accelerating price gains and mar bond market tantrum highlighted as the biggest risks that markets now face in bank of america's latest monthly survey of investors the percentage of investors expecting faster inflation over the coming year in march hit the highest since at least 1995 when the survey began citadel is one of the hedge funds industry's largest players managing about 34 billion dollars okay uh, so this is this is kind of the number that i've been playing with roughly maybe one sig fig off this flagship fund returned 24.4 percent last year despite the turbulent market and this year it was up 5.2 percent to the end of february according to the people familiar with the matter over the fund's 30 years it has averaged annual gains of 19%. Burnishing Griffin is one of the hedge fund industry's biggest and most consistent performers. And consistency is something that we all know Kenny G has. Uh, retail trading now accounts for almost as much volume as mutual funds and hedge funds combined. Okay, so we are the whale now. Look at us. We are the whale now. We have the technology, we have the popularity, and perception is king, as you all know. However, Citadel recently found itself embroiled in the controversy surrounding GameStop. Hey, we got a shout out. The video games retailer whose stock was whipsawed by hedge funds betting against it and a horde of bullish retail traders loosed organized on the Wall Street Bets forum on the social media site Reddit. Uh, bullish, excuse us, we are apish, and that is why we need gorillas in the comment section right now. The the fund stepped in to bail out Melvin Capital, one of the biggest hedge funds betting against GameStop, when Robinhood, a broker brokerage popular with the new generation of retail traders, was subsequently forced for regulatory reasons to curtail trading in GameStop. Many Reddit users seized on a conspiracy theory that it was at Citadel's behest. Citadel Securities, a separate high-speed market maker also owned by Griffin, is one of Robinhood's biggest revenue sources, paying it for paying it for the right to execute the trades of its customers. We talked about payment for order flow a ton. We talked about it a ton and how Citadel Securities is making money off of stealing your data. Uh, and by stealing, I mean truly, this is your data. They are taking the information, betting against you, making you a loser in the process of just participating in the market. And that's right here, taxation without representation. If you guys wanna hear more, we covered it over the weekend. The firestorm led to Griffin testifying at the House of Representatives Financial Services Committee hearing on the GameStop saga last month. How many people are inside that room with you, Kenny G? Please tell us. Although Robinhood attracted the most ire and Griffin testified that Citadel had nothing to do with Robinhood's decision, he did not escape unscathed uh, up from opprobrium from some representatives. Now that's one of the major pieces of this pie is that Griffin came on, he's like, oh yeah, we just bailed out, we just bailed out uh, Melvin, you know, we're just a larger hedge fund looking out for our little bro. Uh, and the DTCC is an even larger purse string organization that says, nah, we're not gonna take care of you, right? You thought that you taking care of Melvin means that we come in and take care of you? 
No, no. And that's where the new regulation for TTCC is going to make it apparent that nobody's coming for you, Citadel. You're on your own. Uh, Griffin largely shrugs off the controversy as a social media concocted tempest stirred up by populist politicians. Now that sentence, say it three times fast. But he also argues that the saga foreshadows a wider, thornier problem of what happens when retail trader and passive index funds start to dominate more of the stock market, with prices becoming more detached from reality. Ooh, inflation erupts. Hold on. Inflation erupts as investors' biggest fears. Oh, sweet. So this is a uh, largest market tail risk by percentage of respondents. This is a survey of what they are afraid of. So we have inflation as one of the biggest fears. And then coronavirus, we have US, uh, 2020 U.S. presidential election, which kind of tells you how old this is. Oh, this is a timeline. So right now, most people are afraid of inflation. And all of 2021, prior to that, people were afraid of the coronavirus. Then, I guess, in November, the U.S. 2020 election. And then the trade war, right? which we had for a good amount of time, quantitative tightening, political populism. Wow, because that's what we cared about in the beginning of roughly 2017 to mid-2018. And then China hard landing, geopolitical crisis, back to China hard landing. In 2013, we had the U.S. fiscal cliff. And in 2012, we had the EU sovereign debt fund. Remember when things were boring? Uh, yes, that, it, things were boring before things got very weird very fast. The U.S. equities, passive funds are now roughly as large as the active managed investment universe after a decade of rampant growth while retail investors now account for nearly as much as all mutual and hedge fund trading combined so big snaps to you guys for jumping on this uh, trading thing while it's hot uh, Griffin highlighted how an oblique tweet of McDonald's ice cream cone and a frog emoji from Ryan Cohen, a big GameStop shareholder, appeared to be the star spark for doubling of the stock's price in one afternoon in February. This is a huge allegation. Let's be clear. This may seem like a benign little paragraph inside a larger article, but this is essentially Ken G, Kenny G pointing at this tweet that Ryan Cohen said of literally just an ice cream cone. Let's look at it. Oh, okay. Well, you guys, you guys know what tweet we're talking about. It is literally just a, a McDonald's ice cream cone from Ryan Cohen. There's a lot of ways that we interpreted it, but when the price spiked after that, it should be noted that Ryan Cohen, if he meant anything by that ice cream tweet, would be in serious trouble. Right, by SEC regulators, by a bunch of other financial regulators, right? Because he is now someone who cannot speak on behalf of the stock, can't speak very much at all about anything while he is transitioning into his role. And, uh, and that is something that Ken G is trying to push as a narrative that look at the ways that Ryan Cohen is sparking these spikes, right? It's clearly Ryan Cohen's fault. And of course, when something bad happens, which inevitably will soon, uh, they're going to try to throw as much as they can to Ryan Cohen for causing these sparks here. The fact that the tweet of an ice cream cone can move markets will be the subject of academic study for years. Griffin said, it represents a dynamic where certain stocks are now almost exclusively owned by retail and passive funds. You're taking, uh, you're, you've taken out active investors who focus on traditional metrics in valuing a equity. So do you agree with what he's saying, right? Is the markets now fundamentally different, super scary and different now that people like you and me are investing? people who have learned how to invest for the very first time, and people who are building out their financial education by joining this channel, pressing that subscribe button, and that bell button. First of all, I wanna thank you so much for getting to the end of this article. We had a lot of information to unpack here, and that is why I want to be able to thank the people that make this video possible. I didn't get a chance to update this last night yet, but it will be updated in case you guys want to be able to join the Moon Platoon, Meatball the Space Legend tier, or the Guerrillionaire tier by pressing that join button down below tonight. And for as always, we'll see you in the money.